Now, first of all, I want to thank CAD and Director of Services, Bernie McDonald, for inviting me to chair uh, this, today's conference. Most of you don't know me, um, so I should introduce myself. My name is Jerry Donnelly. Um, my background is in the public service. I spent 37 years as a civil servant, in fact. And I spent most of that time learning about the process of policy making um, and the process of policy evaluation and analysis that goes with that. And in fact, if I'm being honest with myself, I'm still learning because it's a very complex process. Um, the process of, of making policy that governs and shapes our society is a very complex one and it requires great care. And the one thing that I have learned is that there is a, a need for a strong, robust, evidence-based uh, process when it comes to policy making. If we're going to make more effective policy, uh, then we must be able to predict and anticipate the impact that our policies are going to have on society. Um, so for that reason, events like today's and indeed the conference tomorrow uh, are, make a very important contribution to the entire process and congratulations to CAD for, for organizing it. Um, this is the first of, of two consecutive um, quality standards based uh, conferences. The second one, as I said, is taking place here in the same venue tomorrow. So what do we mean when we talk about quality standards? Well, the definition I have here is that quality standards are concise sets of prioritized statements designed to drive measurable quality improvements within a particular area of health, education, or care. And that's as good a definition as any, I think. So quality standards are derived from the best available evidence. And I think the priority that CAD have for today's conference, and again for tomorrow, is threefold. It's to help the attendees to update their drug-related knowledge uh, from an evidence base. It's to enhance skills of relevance to your work, and it's to meet, it's to network, and to, it's to exchange views. So I hope you'll all have the opportunity to do those things over the next two days. In your packs, you have a, a brief questionnaire which is related to quality standards in drug education. Um, so we'd be very grateful if you could take some time during the course of the day maybe to fill, fill out that, uh, that questionnaire. Now, I should mention sponsors because an event like this doesn't happen without sponsors. And uh, big thanks go to the uh, main sponsor who is the Drug Policy and Programme Unit within the Department of Health. Um, I think without them, it would have been extraordinarily difficult to organize today's event. And I know CAD would also like me to, to acknowledge the sponsors of the raffle, which I think is going to take place tomorrow. Is that right, Bernie? Um, the generos generosity of those sponsors is, is hugely appreciated, as indeed would be, of course, your participation. Um, I mean, organizations like CAD are always struggling with budgets. So sponsorship like this is incredibly important. And I know that a list of those who have donated spot prizes for the raffle will be available during the course of the day. So on to today's program. Now, you will all have a copy of the program in your, um, in your conference pack. Um, the conference, as I said, is called Cannabis, an Update from Home and Abroad. Um, it reflects the recent emphasis that has been placed on proposals to decriminalize cannabis in Ireland. But I expect that during the course of the day, other related matters will also be covered. As you can see, we have a strong lineup of speakers. Um, and uh, each of our speakers brings their own particular level of expertise to bear uh, on the debate. And I will introduce each speaker as we go along. There will be an opportunity for questions and answers, a uh, panel discussion, if you like, at the end of both the morning session and the afternoon session. Um, so contributions uh, from the floor will be both welcome uh, and encouraged during these two sessions. Um, that's probably enough for me. My job now is to, is to sit, to listen, and to keep uh, everyone on time so that we can stick to our schedule. Can I ask the minister if he'd like perhaps to say a few words? It's not in the programme, but as he's here, perhaps he might like to say something to us. Sorry, minister, I don't mean to put you on the spot.
no such thing as a free cup of coffee and a biscuit. Um, I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't planning to, to come into. I met Kevin literally in news talk, and uh, he, I said, look, I'll come over for half an hour. I'm due to go to sale project in the north of the city at half ten. Um, I think that the conversation today is really, really important. There is a cultural issue we have in Ireland, well, with a number of things, obviously with alcohol. And when you actually look at the evidence that has been said of what's happening in Ireland with alcohol and how uh, many Irish people refuse to accept that their, their relationship with alcohol is completely dysfunctional, um, that we have a massive cultural problem. And you realise that actually two people, as I was saying earlier to Kevin, two people in Ireland die a week from alcohol overdoses, fatal alcohol overdoses. And these aren't people who get so drunk that they fall in front of a bus or or involved in a row or something. They're people who drink so much that they die two a week. And then we have a cultural acceptance of cannabis use, as in it's not that, it's not that, it's not a real drug, it's not as harmful as other class A drugs are. But there's people who talk to me who said that 10 years ago they would have been advocates for, for legalization of cannabis, but they wouldn't say it now because it's a completely different substance. It's totally more potent. It's very, very dangerous. And, you know, because the nature of the drug issue changes so much that we have to keep our conversations and our policies updated all the while as well. And that, I think that's a, for, for, uh, a challenge for me in my job is that the National Drug Strategy, for example, is, is seven years old. Seven years ago, we were dealing with a very different drug problem in Ireland than we, than we are now. So for the new drug strategy, which we're compiling at the moment, and <coughs> consultations will begin soon, I think we should have probably have a shorter one because a shorter time span because the big issue as we all know at the moment is polydrug use. It's cannabis, it's alcohol, it's benzos or, or Z drugs all being taken uh, at the same time. And I meet drug um, workers who say, do you know something I'd almost prefer if some, if some of these people were on heroin because at least if they were on heroin, I'd have some kind of a pathway that I'd know how to deal with it. In terms of the polydrug use, it's so chaotic uh, and at least it's such extremes of behavior that it's very difficult to, uh, to, to, to get used um, uh, to, you know, to get a handle on it. But I think what we're dealing with with polydrug use is a cultural acceptance of alcohol use, a cultural acceptance of cannabis use, and a cultural acceptance of, of um, prescription drug use. Uh, I'm not an advocate, even though I am a, an advocate for a discussion and debate around decriminalisation, I'm not an advocate for dec decriminalisation of cannabis by itself. I'm not, because that sends out a very, very dangerous cultural um, signal to Irish society that cannabis is not as a, a big an issue as other drugs are. My discussion or my, my um, belief around decriminalisation comes from our need to have a drugs-free society, but a different conversation how we achieve that and how do we deal with somebody who has an addiction or has been discovered with a level of drugs or, or, or um, quantity of drugs on, on, in their possession. Do we deal, that with, deal with that person solely through the criminal justice system or do we deal with that person uh, as having a medical need that needs to be addressed in a, in a compassionate way? Um, we had a good conversation in News Talk literally there earlier and some of the points Kevin were making were very, very sound. I won't destroy his, his, uh, his presentation before he even gets started, get started. But some of the issues around you know, the drugs court that we have here in Dublin, things that need to be resourced and all the rest of it. Um, but look, I, I wish I could stay for, for longer, but I know Bernie will definitely be <laughs> sending me the, uh, the, the main points that have been made today. But we need to keep having these conversations. We can't really get anywhere if we reduce our discussion on drugs to sound bites in a three minute media discussion. Um, we need to be willing to have an open minded discussion about what's actually happening uh, in Ireland and be true to ourselves. And the last point I'll say is this, I say it as often as I can, you know, every family in Ireland has an addiction issue. Every family in Ireland knows somebody or has somebody in their family with an addiction problem in their past or in their present, be a grandfather or an uncle, auntie or, or a brother or sister. Every family knows what addiction is and what addiction means and the ripple effect that it has. So we should all have a better understanding of what it is and not blame those who are in, in addiction and not blame those who are, who are in recovery because they actually are the ones who are, who are, who are making a, re a, real, a real change in their lives and, and, and re-bricking themselves and, and, and starting again. I mean, sorry, that was to be the last thing I say, but this is, I mean, this will be the last thing I say. Uh, for those who, who think that, um, you know, uh, cannabis is, is in some way not dangerous, I, um, I visited the, uh, one of the, uh, the, the 
the residential treatment centres in, in North County Dublin uh, a couple of months back and I met a 21 year, old, 21 year old man who's trying to get his life back together again who's been addicted to cannabis for nine years nine years so he obviously started when he was 12 and f- I would love if that person could go to all the you know the, 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 the cannabis discussions around the country of those who think that it should just be legalised it's not such a big deal it has destroyed his life he's actually getting his life back together again but his story of starting at age 12 to the position where he is now at age 21 having to go in, into a residential treatment centre is, is, a, is a powerful story but anyway look Today is going to be a, a good conversation. I'll be interested to hear what you have to, to say. I know you make a, uh, you can communi- communicate it to me, and um, and best of luck with the rest of the conference. Okay, thanks very much.